Hello everyone, welcome to Tutitude. Now we are going to see some of the previous ISRO questions. And the level of the ISRO questions are somewhat lesser than the gate questions only. So preparation for the gate is enough in order to solve the questions related to the ISRO. Okay. Now we are going to see this EMTL questions, which are the previous ISRO questions only. So the first question is, the plane wave propagating through the dielectric has the magnetic field component that is h that means h bar is equal to 20 into here I, I will write that one so h bar is equal to 20 e power minus ax cos of omega t minus 0 0.25 x and which is oriented in the direction of y direction that can be told by seeing this a y kya and because it is a h bar that means magnetic field intensity it can be measured in amps per meter and clearly here they have mentioned ax ay az are unit vectors along xyz axis respectively so this is a given h bar what we need to find determine the polarization of the wave okay that is what we need to find so but by seeing this particular magnetic field intensity vector what information we can able to take from this particular equation so easily we can able to understand that h bar is oriented in y direction okay h bar is having only one component that is y component by seeing this unit vector we can able to tell so whatever is there here this is related to y component of the h bar okay then this is the peak value and it is related to the space variation so while it is traveling in the space exponentially it is decreased okay so and this a is indicating with what rate the wave is reducing while it is traveling with respect to x why it is x in is nothing but it is traveling in the x direction positive x, x direction how to tell that one you can concentrate on this one so whether it is cos or sin you need to concentrate on this one this is in the form of omega t minus beta x okay omega t minus beta x here i am taking that one beta x whenever here you are having minus beta x or minus x this is representing the wave is traveling in the positive x direction if it is plus beta x it is traveling in the negative x direction and if it is minus beta y traveling in the plus y direction plus beta y traveling in negative y direction minus beta z traveling in plus z direction plus beta z traveling in minus z direction so anyhow here they have mentioned minus 0 0.25 into x so the wave is traveling in x direction okay that means power is traveling power is taken in the x direction wave propagation is nothing but power is also traveling in the same direction only so that we can take power is available in the x direction and h bar is available in which direction which component is available y y direction so what we need to find here they asked us to calculate polarization but polarization is defined with respect to electric field not magnetic field okay so if you see if you see the definition of the polarization it is the locus of the tip of the electric field as a function of time at a fixed location so here we have to take the electric field orientation not magnetic field orientation but in the given data they have mentioned h bar that is magnetic field intensity but with this data we need to get the orientation of the electric field so how it is possible in general the electric field orientation cross product with magnetic field orientation is equal to power orientation okay so this is uh, what we need to use here so we don't know the orientation of the electric field so same thing i am taking okay or this is what we need to find this is in cross product with the orientation of the h bar that is what already i have told this is y cap so it is equal to power is available in which direction x direction how did we get this one by observing this phase of the cosine so minus x means in plus x direction the power is traveling 
okay are the wave is traveling so now we can able to easily get the orientation of the electric field here so what is this one the cross product of something with y cap should produce x cap generally y cap cross z cap is nothing but we can able to tell x cap but here reverse we need to take okay so here z we need to place here y is there so here generally z cap cross y cap is nothing but minus x cap because here reverse order is there y cross z is nothing but x will come but here z cross y is there so that here minus x will come but here plus x is there so that you keep minus here that means electric field is oriented in the minus z direction okay electric field is oriented in the minus uh, z direction so polarization is also minus z direction so this is the correct option okay so you should know here what is the polarization polarization is defined with respect to electric field and getting the direction of the electric field is important here okay now we will see the next question in free space h bar is equal to 0.1 cos omega t minus beta x into az so that one i am writing here free space is nothing but epsilon is equal to epsilon not we can take and uh, mu is equal to mu not we have to take okay then h bar is equal to what they have given the magnetic field intensity h bar is equal to 0.1 into cos of omega t minus beta x multiplied with the az cap multiplied with the az cap okay this is amps per meter and ax ay az are the unit vectors along xyz axis respectively the total power passing through a square plate of side 10 cm by 10 cm on the plane x plus 2y is equal to 1 so i will write here this is the plane we have to take this is 10 cm by 10 cm but this is taken on the plane x plus 2y is equal to 1 okay so this is what they have given is approximately so what we need to find here we need to find the total power passing so here certain amount of uh, uh, plane is there that plane is given by x plus 2y is equal to 1 that is the plane okay that is the plane but in that particular plane you need to take a square plate like this okay for example if you consider this entire board is the plane okay and in this particular board for this particular portion how much amount of power is passing through this particular thing and that particular square size is 10 cm by 10 cm they have given okay so how to calculate this one in order to analyze this one what we need to take we need to use the pointing theorem okay using the pointing theorem concept we can able to calculate the power passing through this particular square surface okay but entire surface is given by this particular thing x plus 2y is equal to 1 and this is the part of this particular total surface and we need the power which is passing through this particular square surface okay that is what we need to calculate okay so for that purpose what we need to get in the sense first of all we will calculate what is this surface okay that we will calculate so surface is given by so surface is given by s bar is equal to okay this is the surface vector i am taking okay surface is the vector length is the vector but volume is a scalar so here we are dealing with the surface so s bar we are taking okay that s bar magnitude is given by how much here it is 10 cm by 10 cm so so you can take in meters that means it is 0.1 because it is square the area is given by 0.1 square 0.1 square and the surface is the i told that it is a vector so what is the direction of this one the direction of this particular thing is given by from this particular thing okay so when you have ax plus by plus cz also you can able to take ax plus by plus cz is equal to some constant is there then the direction is given by its unit vector so how to get the unit vector is nothing but you see here x is there for the time being you remember this one x cap plus 2 y cap by square root of its magnitude we have to take this is a vector but we need unit vector so how to convert this one normal vector into unit vector we need to divide by its magnitude that is square root of 1 plus 4 1 plus 2 square 1 square plus 2 square that is root 5 we'll get so this is the surface vector okay this is what we got now now 
how to get the total power how to get the total power means so you see here according to pointing theorem p bar is equal to e bar cross h bar okay this is the power density actually because electric field is volts per meter magnetic field is, intensity is nothing but amps per meter so if you multiply these two volts amps by meter square volts into amps is nothing but watts so watts per meter square that means power per area that means this is indicating power density so don't think that p bar is nothing but power here it is power density okay that means watts per meter square we'll get now the average power from this particular thing we can able to get the average power is equal to 1 by 2 real part of e bar cross h bar conjugate then we can able to equate this e by h is equal to eta that is the intrinsic impedance okay that impedance we need to use here here this impedance is equal to we can able to take certain value because that is equal to free space they told that this particular thing is available this particular magnetic field intensity is available in the free space so in the free space this eta value is equal to 120 pi okay this is e by h okay then since we we have here h bar you replace this e bar you replace this e bar with h bar so e is equal to what you will get 120 pi into h so this one we can utilize in this particular formula in this particular formula so that average power is equal to what we will get average power is equal to 1 by 2 if you remove this, that that real part also so this e we are writing as 120 pi okay 120 pi h is there and here one more h is there so magnitude of h square like this we will get okay and here h is nothing but the peak value is nothing but 0 0.1 so you can substitute that one so 1 by 2 120 pi and here 0 0.1 square so this is the average power okay this is the average power we got so now what we need the average power density which is passing through average power which is passing through this square surface we have to calculate so this is a power density that means power per area so if you multiply this one with respect to area you will get power it is watts per meter square so if you multiply with meter square the remaining thing is watts only that is what we need to perform so power passing through this particular surface is equal to okay total power density that is 1 by 2 into 120 pi into 0 0.1 square and it is multi this is the power density multiplied by area we have to take what is that one here area vector already we got this one don't confuse here this is the area vector so if you take that one what we can write here 0.1 square and here we got x cap plus 2y cap by root 5 this is what we will get okay so if you calculate this one okay magnitude if you consider then you will get 8.425 milliwatts this is the power which is passing through this particular surface so once again you see here carefully what they have given h bar they have given so power density we have to write only in terms of the h bar so this particular power density formula if you see carefully this e bar should be written in terms of the h bar so that we have written like that then we got this power density but whenever the power density is multiplied by area then only you will get the power so what area we have to take we need the power passing through this particular square surface so 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters so area is equal to 0 0.1 square meter square okay 0 0.1 square meter square we are using that one in meters next but this is not enough area is having the direction that direction is given by using this one okay so when you have like this ax plus by plus cz is equal to some constant this is the surface equation but what is the normal vector perpendicular to the surface is nothing but ax cap plus by cap plus cz cap by square root of a square plus b square plus c square that is what we have taken here here anyway z term is not there so you need to use up to here only okay so this is nothing but surface vector that is multiplied by power density you will get the power that's it okay now we'll see the next question consider the rectangular cavity as shown below if a is equal to c that means this side length is equal to this one this is a and this is c so a is equal to c they have given sorry this is c 
this is C and height that is given by B and clearly they have mentioned that A is greater than B and C is also greater than B and A is equal to C. So when you consider this is a rectangular ca cavity actually the, the waves whatever the waves we are considering here the wave representation has to be taken like this okay it is one full cycle so this is half cycle or this is half cycle when you have this length is very very small when b is very very small this variation of the half wavelength is not possible here okay the variation of the half wavelength is not possible here here completely this wavelength is occupied half wavelength is occupied along the length b but what they have told b is very very small so this is not possible this is not possible so because of this particular criteria what we can able to get what is the mode we can able to observe that is what we have to see so the frequency is given by v by 2 square root of generally m by a square plus n by b square plus p by c square like this we can able to take here a b c are the dimensions of this particular cavity a b c are the dimensions of this particular cavity so m n p okay based on that we are going to decide now which point is existing as i said previously since the dimension of b is smaller compared to a and b the half wavelength variation is not possible along the b okay along the b so not possible means you no need to take this one so n is equal to zero it is possible along a so one one wavelength variation one half wavelength variation and along c also it is possible so like this we can able to take a 101 so 101 mode is existing so this is the correct option now the next problem is related to antenna theory so here we need to calculate so if the inter element spacing is half of the signal wavelength i'm reading this particular part and the direction of the maximum response is 30 degrees from the perpendicular array. Okay. That 30 degrees you can able to observe here. Here 30 degrees is there. And because it is the 90 degrees, total is 90. Here 30 is there means here 60 degrees is there. Because these three lines are parallel. So this is also making 60 degrees here. And this is also making 60 degrees here. Like this we can able to consider. And in between these two, 1 and 2, you have lambda by 2 variation. And in between 2 and 3, you have lambda by 2 variation. What we need to find? Okay, consider the first element as the reference. So this one we have to consider as the first element. So we need to find the phase variation. Okay, so phase variation for 1 and 2 and for 1 and 3, these two we have to find. Okay, so for 1 and 2, if you take the first calculation, so that is given by beta d cos theta, beta d cos theta. Why we have to take this particular formula? What is beta actually? So if you see what is beta, you will not get any doubt in order to use beta d cos theta. So see carefully, beta is nothing but actually 2 pi by lambda. 2 pi by lambda. What it is giving? The physical meaning is important. Even though we are using the formulas, you should understand the physical meaning. Then conveniently you can able to use the formula wherever it is required. So, it is the phase constant. Beta is the phase constant. Numerator, if you observe, it is the phase. Okay. How much phase variation is available for 1 meter? You see here, I am telling per 1 meter. Because EM wave is traveling like this. For example, whenever it is traveling, okay, whenever, whenever it is traveling, what will happen? Here, for example, it is traveling in the Z direction. Z, there is a change in the Z and there is a change in t also that means uh, the em wave is a space varying quantity and time varying quantity both quantities will be changed space and time space means uh, whenever it is traveling in the z direction we can consider here spatial coordinate is the z so z changes and also time changes so that means whenever uh, this spatial coordinate z is changing as z is changing whatever the change is there in the phase that is defined with respect to beta Okay, I am talking the phase change with respect to spatial coordinate change. The spatial coordinate change is Z. So as Z changes, how much phase is affected? That is given by 2 pi by lambda. You see here, this is a maximum change in phase, 2 pi radians. 
okay maximum change in phase with respect to one wavelength they have taken that means complete wavelength they have taken so it is giving the information that the phase variation for one meter that is actually what is this particular beta phase constant similarly if you take omega omega formula if you observe omega is equal to 2 pi by t you see lot of similarity is there in between these two for em wave you need to understand these two very carefully it is angular frequency Okay, we know very well about this one. It is giving the variation of the phase only. Beta will give the phase variation. Omega also will give the phase variation. But beta will give the phase variation whenever it is traveling in the space. That means lambda, wavelength, measured in meters, traveling in the space. But this phase variation is due to the change in time. 2 pi by lambda, 2 pi by t. You see here, it is giving the phase variation. It is also giving the phase variation. So that what we need to understand here, it is with respect to space, it is with respect to time. That is what we need to do. So once you see here carefully, it is phase per length, phase per distance. Otherwise, phase per distance. When you multiply this one with the distance, what you will get? phase only because here distance is there here also distance is there meters meters will be cancelled so you will get the total phase so beta d is the total phase but here certain amount of angle is there with respect to this horizontal line so that that angle also we have to consider into the case here so that cos theta will come okay so now i have explained why we are using this particular beta d cos theta to have the phase variations okay so now in between 1 and 2, this is 1, this is 2. If you want to calculate beta, already I have given, that is 2 pi by lambda. And d, that is the distance between these two, that is given by 1 lambda by 2. So d is nothing but 1 lambda by 2. And cos, theta is nothing but how much angle is there? 60 degrees is there. So lambda lambda will be cancelled, 2, 2 will be cancelled. And cos 60 is 1 by 2. So what you will get here? Pi by 2. This is nothing but pi by 2. So in between 1 and 2, we have calculated that thing. Now, we need in between 1 and 3. This is 3. So 1 and 3 is nothing but again we are taking the same formula. Beta d cos theta. But here d is nothing but what? Okay, generally formula is given by d. Here d is there. But d is the distance between those two points. Okay. So here, but in the question they have mentioned this one with d only. This is d, this is d. So what we need to do in the sense in between 1 and 3, how much distance is there? 2D is there. So that here you have to take a 2D. So just I am erasing this one. Here we need to use here the distance between those two. So the formula will be changed like this. Beta 2D and it is cos theta. In this manner we have to take. Okay. So beta is nothing but again same thing 2 pi by lambda. Okay. And uh, 2 from the formula I am taking. D is nothing but lambda by 2 and cos 60. Okay, so cos 60 is 1 by 2 anyhow. So lambda lambda will be cancelled, 2 2 will be cancelled. So here 2 pi is there into cos 60 is 1 by 2. So you will get pi. Pi is the answer. So for the first one, that means in between 1 and 2, we got pi by 2. And for the 1 and 3, we got pi. So this is the answer. Okay. Now, the question is related to transmission line. So transmission line of characteristic impedance 50 ohms and feeding a purely resistive load of 200 ohms uses single quarter wavelength short circuit stuff which is placed at a distance d from the load the vhwr on the transmission line section of length d and vhwr on the stub respectively so here two lines you have to consider one is this direct line second one is this short circuited stub Okay, so I am giving the numbering also. This is 1, this is 2. Okay, main transmission line is 1. And whatever the stub we have taken extra, short circuited stub, that is 2. Okay, so what we need to calculate here, for these two transmission lines, we need to find this VHWR. Okay, for the main transmission line and for this stub also, we have to find the VHWR. So VHWR is given by... It is voltage standing wave ratio. It is equal to 1 plus mod gamma by 1 minus mod gamma. This is the formula. So first I will calculate for the main transmission line 1. So to calculate VHWR, we need gamma. Gamma is nothing but what? Reflection coefficient. So reflection coefficient gamma is equal to the formula is given by ZL minus Z0 by ZL plus Z0. 
बिकॉज देर इज अ चेंज इज देर इन बिटवीन जेड एल एंड जेड नाट शूरली हियर नॉन जीरो वैल्यू विल बी अवेलेबल फॉर द गामा ओके सो वाट इज जेड एल टू हंड्रेड दे हाव गिवेन वाट इज जेड नाट इन द क्वेश्चन दे हाव मेन्शन फिफ्टी ओम्स ओके दट इज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इंपुडेंस जेड नाट इज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इंपुडेंस सो जेड एल इज टू हंड्रेड माइनस दिस जेड नाट इज फिफ्टी बै टू हंड्रेड प्लस फिफ्टी सो वाट वील गेट हियर वन फिफ्टी बै टू फिफ्टी दट इज ईक्वल टू थ्री बै फाइव दट मीन फॉर द मेन ट्रांसमिशन लाइन वी गाट दिस गामा दट मीन रिफ्लेक्शन कोफिशियंट लोड रिफ्लेक्शन कोफिशियंट गामा एल आलो वी कैन टेक दट इज ईक्वल टू थ्री बै फाइव सो नौ इफ यू सब्सिट्यूट दिस थ्री बै फाइव इन दि वि एस डब्ल्यू आर वि एस डब्ल्यू आर इज ईक्वल टू वन प्लस थ्री बै फाइव बै वन मैनस थ्री बै फाइव सो इट इज ईक्वल टू एट बै वाट विल गेट टू दट मीन फोर सो वि एस डब्ल्यू आर इज ईक्वल टू फोर जनरली गामा इज इन बिटवी जीरो एंड वन एंड वि एस डब्ल्यू आर इज फ्रम वन टू इनफिनिटी यू कैन चेक हियर गामा वी गाट थ्री बै फाइव दट मीन पॉइंट सिक्स एंड वि एस डब्ल्यू आर फोर सो रेंजेस आर आलो कवर्ड सो यू कैन एबल टू चेक द आपशन फॉर द फस्ट लाइन हियर वी हव फोर इज द वि एस डब्ल्यू आर बट इन द आपशन सी आलो फोर इज देर नौ वी आर गोयिंग टू चेक वि एस डब्ल्यू आर फॉर द स्ट आलो ओके फॉर दिस शार्ट सर्क्यूटेड स्टब शार्ट सर्क्यूट इज देर इज नथिंग बट लोड इज ईक्वल टू हाउ मच नौ फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर शार्ट सर्क्यूट ऐम टाकिंग लोड इज ईक्वल टू जीरो लोड इज ईक्वल टू जीरो वेन यू हेव लोड इज ईक्वल टू जीरो हाउ मच अमौंट ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन कोफिशियंट इज देर दट इज जेड एल माइनस जेड नाट बै जेड एल प्लस जेड नाट सो इफ यू टेक लोड इज ईक्वल टू जीरो जीरो माइनस जेड नाट इज माइनस जेड नाट बै जीरो प्लस जेड नाट इज प्लस जेड नाट सो इट इज ईक्वल माइनस वन आर डायरेक्टली यू कैन रिमेबर फॉर ओपन सर्क्यूट लाइन gamma is equal to plus 1 for short circuit line gamma is equal to minus 1 completely the signal will be reflected okay gamma means reflection coefficient when you have reflection coefficient is equal to 1 what is the meaning the complete signal will be reflected back but what about this minus 1 plus 1 means for the short circuit load you will get here minus 1 that means the reflected wave is out of phase with the incident wave and when you take the open circuit that means zl is equal to infinity you will get a gamma is equal to again one only in magnitude that is one but that is plus one what is the meaning of plus one the reflected wave is in phase with the incident wave so anyhow here short circuit is there you can remember that gamma is equal to minus one or if you calculate also you will get a gamma is equal to minus one only now from this one we have to calculate vswr now from this one we have to calculate vswr so vswr is equal to 1 plus mod gamma l by 1 minus mod gamma l here one thing you have to be very careful that is in vswr formula we are using the modulus of the reflection coefficient if you don't use the modulus if you substitute here without modulus the denominator will become infinite okay sorry denominator will become without modulus if you substitute uh, denominator will become 1 minus of minus 1 then that will be wrong okay you have to take here modulus so what is the answer here 1 plus uh, mod gamma that means 1 plus 1 by you will get here 1 minus 1 that is equal to infinity 2 by 0 that means infinity so whenever gamma is equal to 1 surely you will get a vswr is equal to infinity you no need to calculate this also so that basics you should have like that you have to prepare okay so what is the answer now vswr is equal to infinity means uh, option 4 is the that means option d is the correct option so by seeing all these questions what you are getting okay what you are seeing here we can able to understand that from this analysis uh, the questions are somewhat easy only compared to gate level questions uh, this isro questions are somewhat easy okay but you need to prepare in such a way that up to the gate level if you prepare then you can able to solve these questions very easily then now the next question we will see the plane y is equal to 0 carries uniform current density of minus 20 k cap milliamps per meter the magnetic field intensity at x is equal to 1 y is equal to 10 and z is equal to minus 2 is so they are asking us to calculate magnetic field intensity that means h bar we have to calculate and what they have given that is y, y is equal to 0 plane y is equal to 0 plane means generally xz plane y is equal to 0 plane means xz plane so this particular plane is having the current density plus that means the surface current density plane is nothing but what surface so they have given the surface current density the surface current density is represented by k bar okay that is equal to minus 20 k 
k cap milliamps per meter so here some confusion is there in the question that is what you need to understand very carefully okay so what is that one you see here surface density is represented with k bar okay in the test books you can able to see that surface density surface current density is represented with k bar volume volume uh, current density is represented with j okay so here k bar surface because it is the plane we need to take surface current density that is k bar but they have given this vector in terms of k cap it is like ijk okay i means what unit vector along x axis j is nothing but unit vector along y axis and k is nothing but unit vector along z axis so if you have any confusion here you can change this one like minus 20 z cap also okay because here k is there here also k is there so you might have you may be confused here because of this uh, representation so that i am changing that one to z cap okay so now what is there here k bar is having the z cap direction okay z cap orientation that is what you need to you need to take care okay then what we need to find this uh, magnetic field intensity we have to calculate so if you take the coordinate systems uh, they said that y is equal to 0 that means xz plane so this is the sheet you can able to consider okay so what is the sheet direction sheet direction is perpendicular perpendicular to the sheet surface direction is perpendicular to it plane direction is perpendicular to it so in which direction we have to take perpendicular means two directions are there one is right side second one is left side okay how to see this one this is x axis this is y axis this is z axis so x axis is coming towards you this screen is y z plane so x, x axis is coming towards you so this plane is available in the x z plane already i have mentioned here x z plane so this is the plane okay so plane is having the direction perpendicular to it either this side this is also perpendicular only but out of these two which one we have to prefer that based upon the observation point what is observation point they have given x is 1 y is 10 z is minus 2 that means here either right side of the y axis or left side of the y axis that is our question so here they have mentioned y is equal to 10 y coordinate is 10 that means right side so only this direction you have to prefer you should not prefer this direction okay so we can able to tell now the magnetic field intensity formula i am writing for the surface uh, current okay when you take the surface current with the surface current density that is k bar the equation of this particular magnetic field intensity is given by 1 by 2 k bar cross n cap so it is equal to 1 by 2 k bar is nothing but whatever they have given that one i am taking that is minus 20 z cap this is in cross product with the perpendicular direction perpendicular means in which direction we have to take y cap like this we have to take okay so two ones are two tens are 20 so minus 20 z cap cross y cap actually y cross z is nothing but x we will get that is in the sequence so how to remember that one this is x cap y cap z cap so if you perform the cross product in between these two you will get z so like this you remember cross product in between x and y will give z cross product between y and z will give x cross product between z and x will give y but if you reverse the order minus symbol you have to keep so here if you observe y cross sorry z cross y is there generally y cross z is nothing but x but here z cross y is there that means minus x you will get so minus x cap minus into minus is plus the, sorry here 10 will get na tell so 10 x cap like this will get okay so you can able to observe the answer in the options okay so next a charge of two coulombs okay is placed near a grounded conducting plate at a distance one meter so here one grounded conducting plate is there grounded conducting plate is there so here one charge whose value is equal to two coulombs okay the force acting between the charge of two coulombs and the ground conducting plane in newtons we have to tell so whenever the charge is nearer to this particular ground then easily we can able to go for the image theory concept so in case of the image theory concept what we can do here q charge is there with two coulombs so here actually ground is there exactly opposite charge we can take at the same distance a distance is given by how much distance they have given in the question one meter 
so this is 1 meter distance is there so here also 1 meter we have to take at the same distance that means 1 meter you will be having the opposite charge that is minus q is equal to minus 2 coulombs now the force between these two will give the force between these two only and we know how to calculate the force between the two charges two pi charges using the coulombs law so f bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 q2 by magnitude of r square into r cap this is the formula we have so it is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 is q that is equal to 2 and q2 is a, a minus q that means minus 2 by what is the distance between these two 1 meter plus 1 meter means 2 meters so 2 square we will get okay so if you if you are working with respect to magnitude this is cancelled by this one so answer is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon so this is the answer okay then an antenna with an efficiency 90 percentage efficiency is indicated with the eta so efficiency percentage of efficiency is equal to 90 we have to take and maximum radiation intensity maximum radiation intensity is represented with the u maximum that is equal to 0.5 watts per steradian if you observe the units here how much amount of power is radiated per unit solid angle solid angle these units are given by steradian so how much power is radiated per unit solid angle is given by this uh, 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 radiation intensity u is nothing but radiation intensity that is what they have given next calculate the directive gain directive gain dg this is what we have to calculate calculate the directive gain of the antenna when the input power to the antenna when input power to the antenna is 0.4 watts so pi is equal to 0.4 watts so this is a given data and we need to calculate the directive gain okay so directive gain formula if you observe one say what you will get here 4 pi into u maximum by radiation power radiated this is what we need okay so this is what we need to calculate so how to calculate this one means here radiated power we don't have 4 pi is anyhow constant maximum value of the radiation intensity they have given that is 0.5 so this denominator value we have to calculate first then we can substitute there then you will get the directive gain okay so to get that one we need to use the given data that is for efficiency and the incident power so here i am writing now in continuation so eta is equal to generally power radiated by input power so without uh, percentage if you write this is 90 percentage means 0.9 that is equal to radiated power by inc uh, incident power is equal to 0.4 so from this power radiated is equal to 0.4 into 0.9 that we can utilize here to get the dg so dg i am writing here so dg is equal to 4 pi into u maximum is equal to 0 0.5 by what is a radiated power from this particular equation here 0.9 into 0 0.4 so this calculation you have to do in order to get the answer okay so easily you can able to do this one and correct option you can able to choose properly so here we have seen some of the previous uh, isro questions related to the electronics so with this i am closing this particular video thank you